Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Oh, uh, Mrs. Norton. Dr. Barry. You're just the person I want to see. Well, I've been wanting to see you too, Doctor. Just been in to visit with your husband. How, how is he? Everything's coming along as expected. Oh, I love to hear you say that. And if it keeps up, we may get away without any complications at all. Only may get away without any? Seems to me a, a concussion of the brain and a broken collarbone would be complications enough. If all goes well. Well, could it go otherwise? Well, we hope it won't. But a concussion is a very delicate matter. Mm. David will have to be patient. Does he know? Well, I played down the concussion to him. No use his being worried about himself. Hmm? He knows about his collarbone. We'll blame it for our caution. Uh, have you got a moment, Claudia? Are you in a hurry? Well, only to see David, that's all. Well, can I wait a few moments? I've waited since I saw him yesterday, so a few minutes more won't matter. I won't keep you away from David long. Well, is it anything special, Dr. Barry? There's a nice, comfortable waiting room here at the end of the corridor. I've always been rather fond of this hospital. Have you been with it from the beginning? Been with it since it was a plain, clambered house with four beds. Oh. And now it's a fine stone building with 38 beds. <laughs> yes, indeed. 38 beds. Well, that's something to be very proud of, Dr. Barry. Very proud. Let's sit down here. Right. A few moments ago, Claudia, you heard me say that I didn't expect David to have any complications. Yes, Dr. Barry. But he's had a severe jolt. A sudden car accident. He could have died. But he was lucky. Not even a severe case of shock. Now, that part of it's good. But his spirit has had a jolt, too. Mm -hmm. He's been put to bed, and he's going to have to remain there a while. Now, that's quite a dose. Well, Dr. Barry, that, that David's going to have to stay in bed a few weeks, even if it is in the hospital, that doesn't seem so terrible to me if... if it turns out all right. Yes, if... But see it from David's point of view. One day he was walking around, healthy, strong, ambitious, his oh, own master. That's very important to David. I I know it, Dr. Barry. He hates even to catch cold. You'd think it proved some kind of a weakness in him or something. Exactly, my dear. And now here he is. He doesn't feel too sick anymore. His headache's better. His uh, shoulder doesn't pain him as much. As far as he can see, he's almost the way he always was. And still, he has to remain in bed. He doesn't realize how important it is, day by day, not moving, not able to take care of himself, let alone you. His spirit's hurt. It wouldn't be so difficult, would it, Dr. Barry, if, if David weren't a man? <laughs> You're very wise. That's why I've spoken to you. Well, what can I do, Dr. Barry? A great deal more than I can. What is it? You mustn't get anxious. You must be patient. Oh, I'm, I'm terrible at being patient. I'm almost as bad as David. No, no. I know you better, Claudia. You'll have to help David see that all he can do is wait. And still, he, he mustn't let himself grow anxious by his enforced quiet. Everything's going to be fine, Dr. Barry. It, it must be. Why, there's no reason why you should be anxious. There's no reason, is there? We'll see. It won't be easy, Claudia, to get him to give in. No man likes to count himself dispensable. Mm, especially David. Especially a man in love with his wife and his work. Life gets complicated. Not life. People. <laughs> I never thought there'd be anything complicated about David and me. Well, your life wouldn't be very rich that way, my dear. Well, he's waiting for you. When I knocked to see him, he thought I was you. Well, I'd better not keep him waiting any longer. You may find him a bit depressed today. He started asking me questions. Mm -hmm. When he could get up, when he could go home, and when he could go back to work, when this, when that. You, you, you told him? I temporized. Talked about his collarbone. So 
He's a little suspicious it'll be longer than he thinks. But not as long as it will be. Poor David. Not at all. He's a very lucky man. You'll see that again. Thanks for the talk, Dr. Barry. Just thought you ought to know the whole story, Claudia. Medicine's not just for the sick person in bed, is it? That would be too simple. <laughs> Heavens, we Nortons have taken up an awful lot of your time. A stitch in time. <laughs> and Claudia, it's time if you allow him. Who's the healer? Well, I'm going to see that he gets all he needs. I hope. You will. And keep your fingers crossed. They're crossed. Very crossed. Well, here it goes. Mr. Norton, in bed at this hour of the morning. Oh, Mrs. Norton. Just thought I'd take things easy for a change. Lazy loafer. Oh, you finally come to hold my hand. I've come to let you hold mine. You're the man in the family. Yeah, a fine one, too. Oh, well, you're good enough for me. Well, you're not very fussy. Oh, you'd be surprised. Well, how'd you sleep? Mm, not bad. What? Prettiest little nurse in white gave me the prettiest little pill in white. Spoiled. Well, as long as I haven't got you to talk me to sleep, I have the next best substitute. Nothing takes the place of you. Now, you're just saying that to make me feel good. How'd you know? <laughs> Actually, I don't miss you at all. I, I've uh, decided to fall clean the house instead. When the mouse is away, the cat will play, hmm? I'm the mouse, not you. Well, I'm the mouse these days. Some mouse. <laughs> you look very handsome on a pillow, Mr. Norton. I've always thought so. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing on a pillow. A collarbone is nothing to keep a man in bed. Why, in the, two the, minutes... The uh, business about rebuilding the barn is going ahead fine. Oh, good. Mr. Paradiso is doing it at top speed just for you. And, of course, Mr. Tucker is prodding him. He fancies himself your understudy. Well, the pleasure is all his. <laughs> Claudia. Hmm? You're not really worried, are you? Me? Worried? No. Well, that's all my news. You tell me yours now. Well, Dr. Barry told me not to get up yet. That's all right with me. I have no place to go. Now, let's see. What, what else? Mm. Oh, last night I heard the broadcast of a ball game. Yep. And this morning, the news. When I heard the news, I figure off I'm better off in here. Sounds like a terrible world outside. For most people, I guess. But not for me, Rockwood. <laughs> little optimist, huh? Well, I'd be a fool if I wasn't. I suppose one of us has to be. Well, Mr. Norton, oh, I didn't realize you had company. It's only my wife. Yeah, that's all. Well, I don't want to interrupt anything. You are? I just came in because I thought you'd want a little entertaining. And while I was here, I... Well, are you comfortable? Oh, I'm fine. Is there anything you need? No, not a thing. Oh. Uh, windows open enough? Mm. Seems to be about right. Well, in that case, oh, I'll please just... do sit down. We're only just talking. Well, I have other patients to look in on. Mr. Norton does seem a great deal better now than he did earlier this morning. Why not? Another day's almost half gone. Sun is shining, the birds are singing. That's what I like about Mr. Norton. No way so cheerful. That's other me. patients just complain and complain. How could David complain when he's getting all this wonderful attention? And You'd care? be surprised how. Well, now, don't you talk too much, Mr. Norton, and please don't try to move. No, I won't. If you're uncomfortable or something, you just ring your bell and I'll come right in and straighten you out. Well, thank you, nurse. I'll do that. Hmm. Lovely girl. She thinks you're lovely, too. It's her duty. <laughs> All of her patients are lovely. Well, there's no reason for you to be so modest, darling. Yeah, but I like it fine here. There's a lot to be said for hospitals. You really get good care in a hospital. Am I hearing right? Well, isn't it the truth? It certainly is. Of course it is. I just didn't know you had the sense to see it. That burns. You know, if you were at home, we'd just be letting you lie around. No attention. You'd you'd have to just fend for yourself or or else feel you're imposing on us all the time. And Every word you say is so... Personally, I think you're getting an awful lot of attention you don't deserve. You haven't even had a baby. 
I had a pretty good car accident, and it takes a pretty good driver to have a pretty good car accident and not get killed. Let's joke about it. It's a wonderful subject to joke about. Mm, wonderful. Mm. Say, you should have seen the night nurse, darling. Cute? I should say cute. Mm-hmm. Red- redhead. Mm. She made me an eggnog. It was delicious. I thought you were the man who's afraid of getting fat. Oh, she uh, she said I wasn't the type. Well, redheads usually know. Oh, David, you can't imagine what a relief it is for me to see you're getting such wonderful care. And that you don't mind it. I thought you'd be relieved. <laughs> I am. Now you'll realize that there isn't a thing for you to worry about. Good. So promise me that you won't. I promise. You look tired. Me, Ty? Yeah. I'm not. I'm fi- I, I feel fine, wonderful. Are you taking good care of yourself? You're not running around too much, eh? Not at all. Now, just because I'm not around to keep my eye on you, I don't want you to run yourself ragged, you I hear? I won't, I won't. Then everything's fine. Fine. From here on in, now that my headache's gone, I can just enjoy just myself. Just enjoy yourself. The scenery... I notice the scenery on the ceiling. Mm, you see that crack cracks. in the ceiling? It's like the Mississippi River. Mm-hmm, looks like a horse. <laughs> and the eggnogs, the company, company's fine, the attention. The whole kit and caboodle, I love every minute of it. Even the food is good. You just don't know what it means to me to find you so cheerful. I can't believe it. Well, why shouldn't I be cheerful? Oh, no reason, no reason. Anybody who wouldn't be cheerful is an ungrateful cuss. I, I feel great about the whole business. So you don't have to waste any sympathy on me, you hear? Not one jot? One little jot? Not one little jot, no. Oh, David, now I don't care what anybody says. You and I and all this is going to come out fine. I'm sure because I know things that even Dr. Barry doesn't know. What are you talking about? Oh, about a man who pretends to like nurses fussing over him and... And red-headed eggnogs and, and lying in bed in the morning. I know about a man who pretends because he loves somebody. And when you can do that, darling, nothing can beat you and everything will be fine. Sure it will. So give me a kiss and stop looking so solemn. If you have any teenagers in your house, I suggest you think of them next time you're at the grocer's or the service station and bring home a case of Coca-Cola. They'll probably be delighted at the idea of a whole case of Coke in the house, for they'll have in mind after-school and after-play treats for themselves and for the whole gang. Why shouldn't they have this pleasure? Coke is only a dollar for the 24-bottle case. Mr. King. Oh, yes, Dr. Barry. You asked me the other day if you could visit Mr. Norton. That's right. Well, no reason why you shouldn't. Any time. Oh, then I will after Mrs. Norton leaves. You won't stay too long, of course. No, I won't. Visitors are always more fatiguing than the patient expects. Still, I'll uh, visit him today because tomorrow he'll have another guest. His partner, Roger Killian, is dropping in. Good. The time will pass more quickly for Mr. Norton. Well, I have to make the rounds now, so excuse me. Of course. And thanks for the news, Dr. Barry. As I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.